Okay, I just pulled all the bolts out. I forgot to check the in play, so I did it off camera real quick. They all have in play. The number two is pretty tight. Number one's got probably a good 12 in there at least, 15. These other two are probably closer to 10 or 12. This one's probably more down around five right now. But that's because one of the washers has a little cup shape to it, so it's probably more like eight, but who knows. You always want this one tighter because that's when it works distributor. Or circuit break, if I use the correct terminology. That comes out nice and free, I like that. Okay, so everything seems to check out and work okay. Which is a big plus. So now we're going to goop everything all up and pretend we know what we're doing. The dry runs seem to be successful. Okay, so now i got to get everything all nice and oiled up. Including me. So we start with our number one cam. It's got one shim on there. So always put oil between the shim and the cam. Let the washer go down. And lubricate the top of the lobe with oil. All the way around. Like that. Then I do the gear all the way around the whole gear. So it's not dry. Like that. And a little bit on the shaft doesn't hurt either even though I pre-lubed the bearing. So everything's lubed up that needs to be lubed for now. Goes in. Line up your mark. There it is. One down. And we do the same thing with everything else. Cam plate in there. <clears throat> now the cam plate has chamfers on it. Right here. Those go out because that, in case the cam has a sharp edge in there, it will not gall up right in that spot. So that's why it's there. It's basically a clearance cut. So that goes like that. Then we get all this in here. And this goes in here. So I'm going to do this like this. Same deal. Do it like this. Do it. Good to shut the stupid music off. YouTube will pop my video for music in the background. They already done that. I call that noise. They call it music. It's pretty inconsiderate how that noisy ass noise outside coming out of that radio. Not everybody wanted to listen to it. Okay, we do the next one here. They're all done the same way. This one's got two gears to do, so. Twice as dirty. Yep, come on, get some oil out. There we go. That one's definitely oilier. Goes there. Okay, I'm going to rotate where the cam lines up. Okay, crank goes back to about there. It won't stay there, the weight of the flywheel keeps moving it. And this was more like over there, I think. Okay, now we got this one to do. Put oil wherever I need it, but I don't get my fingers all full of oil. Try to avoid that if I can. At some point, I'll get oily though. Get about right spot there and spot there maybe. <clears throat> that washer's screwing me right now on the back side. It's not letting the cam go in the hole over there. Uh, 
Okay. Thin washer is the one that was screwing with me, I think. It wouldn't let me go together. You might have noticed that. Okay. Wipe that off so I can see the mark. Okay, we'll try this again. a lot better when your washer is not fighting you. Okay, once again, we got a mark right there. Mark there, mark there, and mark over here. Now you can rotate this gear back to make those line up more evenly. When it goes forward like this, this works like on Andrew's cams, it likes being timed over here, but obviously Harley cams like being rotated back to here and be timed. It's just a matter of where the rotation comes in. But if in doubt, just rotate it until they all line up correctly. If you're off of a tooth, you'll see it fairly quickly. So when everything's in here correctly, all of these lobes are down and this one's pointed up. See how it's pointed up right there a little bit? It's not all the way up, but about half up. Okay, now we gotta go put some more grease on oil in there and do the outer gear. Move up the shaft really good there. Take some of that off. Put it up in there directly. There we go. I've already lubricated that gear, so I'm not going to put more oil on this. It's not as critical. Boom. That mark's lined up now also. Okay, so now all of those are lined up. And initial lubrication is done. I still got to lubricate all the shelves and all the bushings in here. There's no seals in here to worry about, so I don't have to worry about that part. Got to make sure this is lubed up here so it works really also. Now in the magneto over here, sometimes there's a seal that goes in here. We'll have to see. I'll put that in later. It should be able to pop, pop in pretty easy. So. That way it'll make it more difficult later. I like doing it that way. <coughs> okay, now we're going to do our gasket and all our surfaces. And we're going to use our gasket cinch, our thin, thin sealer, because these surfaces are all in pretty good condition. Now we're going to have to rotate this cover and get the dowel pins all lined up before I tighten all the way down because of all the misalignment issues we have. So we're going to have to let the cam cover kind of self-center to be the least amount of drag. Normally you wouldn't have to do that on these old bikes. On the later motors you do that too, the 71 motors. You have to do that on every one of them. 71 and later that is. Because they only have one dowel pin. Let's have everything else self-center. Down here, gooping this up now. So, just put a nice thin layer on all the surfaces. You don't need much. That's all it takes. Do the same thing over here on the gasket. Surface is all wet, it's done. <clears throat> okay, that side's done. Let's flip it over and do the other side. While you do this quickly, it will not stick to the gasket board. You go take a quick nap or go grab a beer, it'll be stuck when you get back. And more likely you'll tear the gasket trying to get it apart. All our clearancing was done on this gasket, and gaskets do vary, so it'd be best if you didn't do that. Okay, so 
now pull this up. You can let it hang for a minute or two somewhere and get tacky or just put the thing on. I'm just going to put it on. Get the spider webs out of there. Once this thing sticks, it's going to stick. Now it's still a little tacky, so it's a little wet, so it's not sticking 100%, but Gasket Cinch does like itself, so it sticks really good to itself. Line up all the holes as you go around. Do your little adjustments you need to do. And you're stuck. Now before you put the gasket on for real, you want to make sure that your oil holes all line up through here. Make sure there's no open void underneath. These gaskets have different cutouts on them. These early motors have the bolt hole in here. The late ones do not have this bolt hole. And they don't have this dowel, so it just goes straight across. So that gasket does not have any of these things in there. This is the early gasket where it has all the holes in it. So even though the gaskets would fit all the same year ranges, they don't always have all the stuff for the early motors on them. And the later gaskets, these will be different shapes through here, even though the holes line up pretty good. That'll be off. So that's variable. Now this has a slot right here because on the lake cover there's a hole here instead of here. It moves over one, one thickness. I think they did that in 77 on the when they changed it in new cases. So small change. Same gasket. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and goop up everything now here, the rest of it. Something I forgot to do was put lubricant on the oil pump gear down in there. Totally forgot to do that. It's not good. So put a little bit in there to get in there. I have to rotate the motor a little bit to get some oil in there now. Assembly lube. Make sure you get this worm gear up here also. That's how I remembered. And don't forget your pinion gear. Even though technically we are lubed it by that big gear. Okay, so now we're gonna let that fall down a little bit. Rotate this a little bit. So I can get some more oil on the worm oil pump gear in there. Okay, that's enough of that. Okay, we can leave that like that, that'll be fine. Okay, now we can go ahead and lubricate up the cam cover down here. Make sure you get the thrust surfaces here also. A little bit too much oil on these is not going to hurt anything. Don't be afraid to get your finger in there and get it nice and gooey. I'll push and clean up. Get the whole thing lubed in there. This is hard to lube this, so you kind of just pour oil in there and kind of works itself in there. No real way of getting oil in there without just playing with it. All right, hopefully it's lubricated. Okay. A little dab of grease. Get some on your pinky. Pinky lube. I'm going to go ahead and get this shifter shaft bushing hole right here. It's hard to lube that from the uh, once you got the cutting cover on there.
Now we can go ahead and put the cover on. Just let it slide right on there where it wants to sit. What the hell was that noise? <laughs> that was weird. Ripping, tearing, grinding noise. I wonder what that was. Some kind of a chatter. Hmm. Never had that before. It's common on this motor. It does all kinds of weird things. I don't know what that noise was, but it ain't doing it now. Obviously, it got the lube where it needed it. Next longest one goes there. You got three shorts. One, two, and three. Okay. Slight pressure. Slight pressure again. I'm not even putting one foot pound of torque on this, just very light pressure. I'm going to go ahead and turn the motor over a few times. It's that noise again. It's up in the front. Not as loud though. Okay, it's turned over pretty free right now. A lot freer than it did before when I had a torque on it. So as I'm rotating, I'm just to screw up a little bit here. Turn it nice and free now. Go the forward direction. I should rotate it backwards better than forward. <laughs> a little different. Not a lot, just a little bit. It's not quite enough to bring. There, it almost came up on its own. Just enough to drag there, it doesn't want to come up on its own. It's trying to though. Before it went about there. Didn't take much. Should we take the oil pump out of the picture so it Crank kind of comes up on its own. So, forward direction. So, pretty free. Okay, now we're going to tighten all these screws up with our impact knocker. Now you got to be careful on this screw and this screw. They have very little engagement. There's only two or three threads. Don't get carried away with those. So, Remember which ones are real short. It'd be nice if they uh, made them longer, but they didn't. Okay, we're going to start in the center, work our way around.
Feels good. Okay, I'm gonna give another good torque. So you're gonna hold it and give a good whack. That's pretty tight. Careful on that one. This one you can tighten it pretty good. When the screw quits moving with heavy hits, it's not it's tight. So when I get a real heavy hit, it moves, and then the second hit, it barely moves at all. I'll say you know it's tight. And these will have to be retorqued after the bike's run. Okay, I got this one already. Ah, bastard. Dinged it up a little bit. Fix the screw when it screws up. See it popped out and twisted on me just as I hit it. Okay, so I did all those. Still rotates around fairly good. It is definitely tighter a little bit. Not sure why, but. Nice and even all the way around though. It's not even good to have a real tight spot in one place, so that's a plus. Okay, so we're gonna let that sit up a little bit. Now the gasket looks like it's sticking way up on this corner, but we already know it was all the way against the gasket we put it on, just the case. Okay, so the shifter shaft, which is over here, just needs to go into the hole over there and make sure it works. Well, come off the bench here. Too far over. Okay, so this we're gonna put a little grease on it. If you're on a transmission, I use grease and water I use oil or assembly lube. Okay. Should get all the way up in the edge in there. Stick it in the hole. Wiggle it like this as I'm going in a little bit. When you get over here, stop. Put some new grease on it because the seal wiped off what you had. Go back and forth a few times in both directions to wipe off. Get it well lubed in there. So you want to make sure it's well lubed. See on both sides here. Usually nobody, zerk, nobody hits these with a zerk. This is lifetime lubricated. You probably won't see another little drip of oil in there or grease for the next 20 years. Unless there's a massive oil leak on the bike, then you'll see it. Other than that, it runs dry. That's why those bushes don't live too long. Pretty highly loaded and don't get much lube. Okay, so wipe off the excess. Stuff it through. Wipe off the excess on that side too. There you go. All right, that's how you do that one. So it goes in there like that. That's where it sits. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, back in a minute.